Bwana asifiwe. Can you give your neighbor a high five with power? <laughs> Please, I did not say you slap your neighbor. I said you just give your neighbor a high five. Let's appreciate the young people one more time. And we say that the young people are the leaders of today. I'm saying the young people are the leaders of today. They're not waiting for tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow doesn't come. They're leaders today. And so young people, uh, show yourself leaders. You are leaders in Jesus' name. We want to read the scripture. We're reading from the book of Mark, chapter 11. Uh, verse 20 to 25. These are familiar verses uh, that we like to read. It says, Now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cast has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, Whoever says to this mountain, <coughs> be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, when you pray, when you pray, Whatever things you ask, when you pray, when you pray, believe that you have received them and you will have them. Verse 25. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive them or forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. This is God's word. And God's people say it. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor you're looking good. Better than yesterday. And tomorrow. You will shine. In Jesus' name. Shiny, shiny. Meta, meta. Sparkle sparkle. sparkle, sparkle. Don't forget to wear. Yes. Amen. Jesus said, let your light shine. The Bible says, arise and shine. Let me tell you this. Wherever you go, shine. I declare that you will shine in your health. Amen. You will shine in your emotions. Amen. You will shine in your finances. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I cannot be broke. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Tell them again, I cannot be broke. I cannot be broke. Tell them I only have some cash flow challenges once in a while. <laughs> in Parklands Baptist Church, we shine. And today we want to talk about faith authorizes mountains to move. And I was not here last Sunday, which was Father's Day, and I was at Good Shepherd uh, sharing that message. So I'm back here to be able to say to all the fathers, happy belated Father's Day. I'm talking to the fathers. Fathers, happy belated Father's Day. God bless you so much. Let's, let's appreciate all the fathers in the house. Many times we wonder, where do we use faith? This faith that the Bible talks about that moves mountains. Where is the best place to use it? And many times some people think the best place to use faith is when you're preaching, 
or is when you are rebuking your landlord. Hello? But there's something Jesus said, and that's what I read earlier, and I want to read it again, because faith will move your mountains. I'm saying that faith will move your mountains. I'm saying that faith will move your mountains this week. Mark 11, 23 and 24. I want to combine those two, even as I share a couple of thoughts today. It says this, For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, so there's a particular mountain, not to just a mountain, but to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Then verse 24 is connecting that statement by saying, therefore. Now, that word therefore is very important. <clears throat> and for those who did maths, you know the word therefore is always a very key word. Because in, in an equation, when you're solving an equation, 2x minus 2 is equal to 0. Hello? 2x minus 2 is equal to 0, or let's say is equal to 4. So 2x minus 2 is equal to 4. The next line is 2x is equal to 4 plus 2. Hello? 4 plus 2 is what? It's 6. So 2x is equal to 6. So 2x is equal to 6 makes x is equal to 6 divided by 2. Therefore, you remember the three dots. Therefore, 2 cancel 6 goes 3 over 1. Hallelujah. And x is equal to what? It's 3. Now, the word therefore is very important. So anytime you read the Bible and you see the word therefore, there is something that was said a bit earlier and this is the conclusion. So let me read that verse 23 again because it's talking, like, let me go to verse 22 because it's talking about faith that moves mountains. So Jesus answered and said to them, have what? <clears throat> have faith in God. Verse 23. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. And then verse 24 says, therefore, and that's why I was sharing this scripture, therefore I say to you, whatever you ask, when? When you pray. Believe that you receive them and you will have them. In other words, one of the best places to cause your faith to move mountains is in what realm? When you're praying. And let me tell you this. God is a God who answers prayer. And God will move your mountains. God will hear you. The young people here were illustrating various kinds of prayer. And some of us fell in certain categories of that illustration. Hello? But I want you to know that God indeed is your father. And God has created an opportunity for you to talk to him. You don't have to be afraid of God. Because you're created in the image of God. And God loves you. That's why the Bible says, let me read that in Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Again talking about prayer. He says this, call to me. And I will do what? I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. There are things God wants you to know. He only reveals them when you talk to him, when you pray. And I want you to know that there is no mountain that God cannot move. And I want to give you some illustrations of mountains that needed prayer. And then I'll just give you a list of the kind of faith that makes these things happen. The first story is found in the book of Luke chapter 18. And Jesus was trying to illustrate this thing called prayer. 
Verse 1, it says this. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to do what? To pray and not lose heart. Now the reason why he said that is that many people start praying, but they lose heart along the way because the prayer does not seem to be answered. The mountain does not seem to move. Let me tell you this. God is a mighty God who moves mountains. For this woman, I want to show you the kind of mountain she was facing. The Bible says this, verse 2. It says, there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God, nor regard. Let me read this in the NIV so that it can just flow. Let me start with verse 2. In a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea. Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time, he refused. But finally, he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. Now, that's an interesting way of saying it. Now, in the other version, it says that she will not wear me out. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice. I'm saying to you that God will give you justice. He says, I will see that they get justice. And how? Quickly. And then he concludes by saying, however, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? And so one of the mountains that we deal with is the mountains of finding justice in your life. And sometimes it can be a mountain. And God is saying, through prayer, the mountain can move. Hallelujah. Let me talk about the church in the book of Acts, chapter 4. They were experiencing persecution. There was a mountain of persecution because they had just healed a man who had been a cripple for a long time. In chapter 4, verse 23, the Bible says this. It says on their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer. They raised their voices together in prayer. They raised their voices together in prayer. I am saying they raised their voices together in prayer. They dealt with the mountain through what? Through prayer. And they prayed to God and they said, Sovereign Lord, they said, You who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them, you spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David, why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats. And enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And the Bible says, after they prayed. Hallelujah. And I want to say this, after you have prayed, mountains are going to move. I'm saying mountains are going to move. He says after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was what? Was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God boldly. Verse 32 goes on to say this. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own. But they shared everything they had. Verse 33. With great power. The apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all. 
Hallelujah. Let me say this. Your mountains are going to move. I'm saying your financial mountains are going to move. I'm saying your financial mountains are going to move. Why? Because people have found a place to release their faith and it is released in the realm of prayer. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. There was another man by the name of Daniel. The Bible says this, Daniel chapter 10. Again, he needed a revelation about the future. He needed a revelation to know where things should be. And it says this, in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a revelation was given to Daniel, who was called Beteshazzar. Its, its message was true, and it concerned a great war. The understanding of the message came to him in a vision. At that time, I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks. I ate no choice food, no meat or wine touched my lips. I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. On the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing at the bank of the great river, the Tigris, I looked up and there before me was a man dressed in linen with a belt of fine gold from offers around his waist. His body was like topaz, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and his voice like the sound of a multitude. I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. Those who were with me did not see it, but such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. So I was left alone, gazing at this great vision. I had no strength left. My face turned deathly pale, and I was helpless. Then I heard him speaking, and as I listened to him, I fell into a deep sleep, my face to the ground. A hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, consider carefully the words I'm about to speak to you and stand up for I have now been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Then he continues, do not be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me for how long? For 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief priests, came to me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. I want you to know that Daniel prayed for 21 days not because God needed 21 days to bring the answer, but because when you begin to pray, the devil will resist you. I'm saying when you begin to pray, the devil will resist you. Because he knows when you're in that realm and you release your faith, there is nothing he can do. How many times have you ever started praying? You know, if you are listening to music, I mean you're enjoying yourself, listening to music, all kinds of things. When you're talking to your friend, you're so alive. The moment you start praying, have you ever noticed that suddenly you begin to feel sleepy? Hello? I mean, you start saying, Father, I am so glad to come into your presence. And as I come before you, before you, before you, <sighs> Twenty minutes later, you wake up and you say, as I was saying. <laughs> Let me tell you this. Pray the challenge because the devil will resist you. Some of you give the devil also an advantage by praying in the wrong position. Tell your neighbor, position is important. How many of you have prayed Lying on your bed. <laughs> looking up. And then after some time you felt cold and said, I think I need to pray while I'm covered. <laughs> For sure, that prayer gets finished sometime in the morning. And you don't know exactly what you say because you knocked out. Let me tell you this. The devil knows that when you're in this realm of prayer and you release your faith, he's finished, he's defeated. And that is why prayer can be very challenging, not because we don't know how to pray, 
but because we're entering a spiritual realm. Hallelujah. And that is why it is important for you to keep praying and not give up. Hallelujah. Keep talking to God. Keep calling on his name. And you know when Jesus Christ was about to be crucified and he went with the disciples to the garden of Gethsemane, the Bible says that he prayed for one hour when he turned all his disciples were what? Had been knocked out. They had entered a spiritual realm that was very dangerous and if they were not awake, things I mean the devil just hit them. And then later Jesus said the spirit is indeed willing but the flesh is is weak. <coughs> and that is why I believe we have sometimes relegated prayer to prayer warriors. Hello? And we say, me, since I cannot pray, I'm going to let prayer warriors pray for me. I'm going to, to let the intercessors pray for me. I'm going to let the pastor pray for me. But I want to invite you into this realm because it is an amazing realm. And I'm saying, we pray and pray. And don't pray like anybody else. Just pray like yourself. Hallelujah. Don't copy somebody else's prayer. Uh, and what the two guys were doing here, hallelujah. Don't, don't wait for somebody to teach you how to pray. You do what? Pray and create your own way of praying. There was a funny story I had some time back of this bishop who used to pray and used to pray and he had a very playful cut. Very nice cut, and it was very playful. And because the cat was very prayerful, every time he would enter into prayer, the, the cat would jump on him, the cat wants to play with him, and all kinds of things. So one day, the bishop took a string and tied the cat on a chair and moved a distance where the cat could not reach. And he prayed. And so he was not disturbed. The whole time he was praying, he was not disturbed. And as the days went by, some of his pastors would visit him and they would see the bishop praying with a cat tied on a chair. They didn't ask him, why are you praying with cats? They just knew that that's the way the bishop prays. Hello? One day, all these pastors, as they started their churches, they would pray with what? With cats. Tied on chairs. And you know, if that passes on and on and on, pretty soon people begin to believe that if you're going to pray and pray with a breakthrough, what do you have to do? Have a cat next to you. The only thing is they've never did what? Asked him. Now, you may come and sometimes listen to Pastor Ambrose pray. And some, he may do some strange things. And you may wonder, why are you doing strange things when you're praying? You need to ask him so that he can tell you. Now, you know that me, I don't do strange things. Hello? And for, for us here in Parklands, we just talk to God. We talk to God like he's right here. Hallelujah. And you don't have to cough for him to show up because God is present. Hallelujah. He's right there. And so today I'm encouraging us to pray because the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will do what? Will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins and heal their land. One of the most amazing examples of prayer we can ever learn is from our children. Have you ever listened to children pray? You know, children have nothing to hide. They just pray. They just talk to, to God. And the Bible says, be as little children. And talk to God. Like he's right there. And you know children tend to believe. That after they have told God something. God will do it. And that's the kind of faith we need. As we pray. 
But the older we get, we become more professional in our praying. We also become more complex in our praying. And it is worse, especially when you have gone to a theological college, because your prayers become even worse. Hello? You learn vocabulary that is not common to people. Father God, the most holy and reaching God, as we come before you, we turn to you petrified and sanctified. <laughs> and we acknowledge your ambitiousness in the universe. You know, God is wondering, what are you trying <laughs> to say? Just say what you're supposed to say. Tell your neighbor, pray. And so Jesus kind of gelled issues of prayer and summarized them. And he said, when you pray, just pray simple like this. Father, who art in heaven, your name is holy. May your kingdom come. May your will be done. On this earth as it is done where? In heaven. And Father, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And Father, yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. And Jesus said, that's a summary. That's not what you should be praying. That is a summary of some of the things you should be talking to God about. The realm of prayer is the realm where you release your faith. So tell your neighbor, release your faith in prayer. Four things to summarize how to release faith in prayer. Number one, faith has a realm. Faith has a key. Faith has a challenge. And faith has results. The first one I said, faith has a realm. That's what I've been talking about for the last couple of minutes. So let me go to that. Because the realm of faith is what? Is what? The realm of faith is what? The realm of faith is what? I've written it up there. The realm of prayer is what? Is believing prayer. The reason why I said believing prayer is because many times when we pray, we don't believe. And Jesus said, when you pray, believe that you have received what you have asked for and it shall be given to you. Just believe. It's called believing prayer. Why believing prayer? Because we also have what is called ritual prayer. Where you just utter things, but you don't know what you're saying. It is ritual. It's, it is so constant that you can say it without thinking and you have not communicated. It's called ritual prayer. Your mind was not in the prayer. You are just mouthing words. You're just saying things. And God is not obligated to answer those kinds of prayers. There is also, also what we call unbelieving prayer. People praying, but they don't really believe what they're praying for is going to happen. Let me tell you this. When you come before God, this is what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Let me read those verses. Hebrews eleven six 6 says, and without what? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must do what? Must believe. That he does what? That he exists. And that he rewards those who honestly seek him. Must believe. One time there was a young, a young girl who was about to do her Form 4 exams. But something happened to her and one day she was found walking in the streets out of her mind. It's a young girl used to come to Parklands Baptist Church many years ago. And she was taken to Madari Mental Hospital. 
And while she was there, her sister, some of her friends, came to me and said, Pastor Ambrose, so and so is at Madari Mental Hospital. We believe that she's possessed. So can you come and pray for her? I had, I had never gone to Madari Mental Hospital. Hello. So I entered that place, but I entered with a preconceived mind. Because I knew the moment I entered that place, I'll be faced with demonic attacks. I might enter there and people will jump on me. But the moment I entered in, and I went with a friend of mine, and I entered in, I found that everybody was just fine. Hello? Everybody was fine. So this girl we were going to look for, she comes and says, Pastor Ambrose, you're here. And I'm still waiting for her to start <laughs> meowing like a cat. <laughs> Preconceived. <clears throat> she comes and then she hugs me. And in my heart I'm saying, Heavenly Father, protect me, protect me, protect me, protect me. <laughs> And later she sat down and we were just talking. Of course, they had sedated her. They had given her quite a, a, a bit of tranquilizers and she was a bit dazed. And, and we came in and we said, we just want to come and pray for you. And I think some of the people who had come with me were really believing that we were really going to spend about an hour casting demons. But let me tell you this, and I'm talking to the young people today. Don't be afraid of demons. I'm saying to the young people, don't be afraid of demons. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And so we went with a friend of mine now. He's in there. And we just said, we want to pray for her. And so my friend, who was quite a bit of a sanguine, a lot of energy, started praying. Oh, Jehovah God. We have come here. Now, God, we are asking for the, for the presence of the Holy Spirit to arrive. And, Lord, we are commanding this mountain to move. And, dear God, we believe that, Lord God, there's no demon that can stop us in the name of Jesus. And he really prayed. And as he was praying, I was telling myself, now, when I pray after him, how am I going to pray? <laughs> uh, because he was setting the bar on how to do what? How to pray. But when he finished... I said, Lord, I'm just going to pray the way I pray. So I went and, and looked at the girl. And I looked at her and I said, um, we are just about to pray for you. We have already prayed. And the Lord Jesus Christ is going to get you out of this hospital and go home. So would you like to go home? She says, yes. So you're not going to stay here for long. We're just going to ask the Lord Jesus Christ to touch you. And you're going to go home. In other words, we are approaching that prayer believing. And the believing is not what this prayer man can do or that prayer woman can do, but believing that this is what God can, can do. So we laid our hands on her and said, Father, release this girl from this place and bring her back to herself so that she can do her Form 4 exams and continue her life. In Jesus' name. That was it. Tell your neighbor, no drama. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we left and went home. Do you know that that girl was discharged the next day? And she went home. I'm saying your mountain will move. I'm saying your mountain will move. Amen. Believing prayer will change your situation. But secondly, as you pray, faith has a key. I want to read this verse. Faith has a key. Tell your neighbor, there's a faith key. And the faith key is just what you see there. It's called seeding prayer. In other words, your prayer are becoming a seed into God's kingdom and releasing what God has in that seed. Let me read Matthew chapter 17, 
verse 20. But let me start a bit up there, verse 17. Let me read those verses. Jesus said, You unbelieving and perverse generation. Jesus replied, How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Being, how, how long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. <coughs> Jesus rebuked the demon. And it came out of the boy. And he was healed at that moment. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, Why couldn't we drive it out? And this is the part I want you to get. He replied, Because you have so little faith. Truly I tell you, If you have faith, as small as what? A mustard seed. You can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Now, I want you to get that seed he's just talked about. The reason why these people are finding it very difficult to cast that demon is that they already had in their system that this mountain cannot move. If you approach a problem, knowing that the problem cannot be solved, it will not be solved. You must handle a situation knowing that it has a solution. Praise God. Jesus said, if you believe, nothing shall be impossible for you. Not for God, but for who? For you. The reason why he said seed, now I want, you to, I want to read this in the New King James Version, 17 verse 20, because it says it in another way. It says this. It says, because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith, and I want you to know the difference. If you have faith as a mustard seed. Now, the other version said, if you have faith as small. Okay, go to NIV so that uh, I can get this point across. NIV says, if you have faith as small. It uses the word small. New King James says it this way. If you have faith as as a mustard seed. Now what's the difference? Now, when you say if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, it, it, refer, it can infer that you can have faith that is bigger than a mustard seed. Jesus is not talking about the smallness of the mustard seed. He's saying you just need to have faith as a seed. As a seed. Tell your neighbor, as a seed. As a seed. As a mustard seed. Because the mustard seed is very interesting. That though it is tiny, when it begins to grow, it becomes a big tree. Jesus is saying, if you can just believe that nothing is impossible, the mountain can be big, but when you release that seed into that situation, it will begin to grow and grow and grow and move your mountain. But the most important thing is this, plant the seed. If you walk with a seed in your pocket for 10 years, it remains a seed. The moment you plant it, you plant it, it grows into an environment and God releases the life in that seed to move whatever mountain. Tell your neighbor, believe that nothing is impossible. Now why do you believe nothing is impossible? Because with God, nothing is impossible and God has created in his, in his image and in his likeness. Your mountains are going to move. I'm saying your mountains are going to move. You will get a job. I'm saying you will get a job. But you must believe. You must believe. You must face situations knowing that God being on your side you will make it happen. Amen? God being on your side, you'll make it happen. And I'm saying to the young people who are going to the university, the university is a university 
and it is one of the most dangerous places your parents can release you to. Hello? The university is not Parkland Baptist Church. Where you just sing, The university has crazy things. And if you don't go out with your personal faith, you're going to drown out there. You're going to drown out there. You're going to wonder, was I ever in Inda? But I'm telling you, God has put something in you that the devil cannot defeat. God has put something in you that the devil cannot defeat. You're more than a conqueror. I didn't go to Nairobi University, but I did a lot of work at the Nairobi University. In fact, uh, I had an, an office at the Nairobi University working with students. Thank you, Jesus. My office was next to the Women's Hall of Residence. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I'm telling you at the university, one of the most challenging days at the university is Fridays. Hello? I remember I was at Kenya Science Teachers College, and that's a college, I'm at the university there, and I'm at the college there, and Fridays, you know, people waited for Friday because that was, it was movie night. On Friday, it was disco time, university. Just near Kenya Science, there was a disco right across the road. Huh? Hello? And teachers and students used to meet there and dance the whole night on. Our days are not like these days. Those were the days we used to sing songs, boogie down, boogie down, boogie down, boogie down. Hello? <laughs> All kinds of crazy songs. Hmm? Move your booty, your booty, your booty. Come on, move it, move it, move it. And then after that you say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But I want you to know, be like Daniel. The Bible says Daniel was at the universities and he walked in faith. And him, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they walked in faith. And the Bible says they were ten times better than the, the young people of Babylon. Let me tell you this. Don't carry the faith. Build your own faith. Your parents have their faith. You have your own faith. Build your faith. And I'm telling you, as you plant it as a seed, people are saying, we are going out for the night. You, you are saying, I'm staying in for the night and I'm praying. I'm trusting God. I'm believing God for a breakthrough. Other guys are in, at the university, they are, being, they are being paid for. They have a scholarship. For you, your parents are wondering where the next school fees will come from. They are praying, but you also begin to believe God to supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. At the university is where, you know, people get multiple girlfriends and boyfriends. You fall with this one, you fall with that one. All kinds of things are happening. Your parents are not there to check you out. But you are there alone. But guess what? Because of God, you cannot walk alone. And so put your hand in the hand of the master. And I'm telling you, you will move your mountains. You will move your mountains. And your parents can sleep and sleep well because they know that their sons and daughters are releasing their faith in their mountains, and the mountains are moving. Hallelujah. If you have faith as a mustard seed, tell your neighbor, as a mustard seed. He didn't say as a mango seed. As what? Mustard seed. 
you can say to this mountain, move. But let me say this as I finish. Faith has challenges. Tell your neighbor, faith has challenges. There are challenges that will come against your faith. Uh, and I want to say that and I'll just say it briefly because you need to note that, that faith can be disabled. There is disabling prayer. And something that will disable your prayer is something that Jesus attaches to that statement when he was finishing that message. Mark eleven twenty five. Listen to what he said. He says this. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, do what? Forgive him. That your Father in heaven may also forgive your trespasses. One of the things, I'm speaking now to all of us, one of the things that will disable your prayer and will cause faith not to be released is unforgiveness. Tell your neighbor, you must forgive. Now, some people think that word is excuse. You don't, he's not saying excuse them. He's saying forgive them. If somebody steps on your toe and says, please, please forgive me. And you say, so I forgive you. Then the next minute they step on your toe. And you say, they say, please forgive me. And you say, I forgive you. The third time they step on your toe. And they say, forgive me. Let me ask you. Are they actually asking for forgiveness? Is that what they're asking? No, they're not asking that. They're actually saying, excuse me. But here Jesus is not saying, excuse them. He's saying, forgive. Now, of course, I know that there are people who have been hurt so bad. They cannot forgive. But let me tell you this. It doesn't matter how hurt you've been hurt. How badly you've been hurt. The forgiveness is not for so and so. The forgiveness is for you. You know when you don't forgive, you poison yourself. You're killing yourself slowly. But let me tell you this. Jesus is saying, if you're going to see mountains move, if you're going to see that nothing is impossible for you, there's a little thing that you just need to do. Learn to do what? forgive in an electric circuit when the fuse goes out what must you do if that current is going to go through what must you do replace the fuse the fuse is like a, like a tiny thing and sometimes when you have been hurt your fuse blows out and let me tell you this what you need to do to replace that fuse is what Jesus is saying, forgive. If somebody has something against you, forgive. Not for their sake. For whose sake? For your sake. Let me read an interesting verse here in Romans chapter 12. It says this about how we deal with people. It says this around verse 10. Just pick it up around verse 10. We go on the other side. NIV, please. It says... NIV. It says, be devoted to one another in love. Be devoted to one another in love. It's showing how, how, you, how you relate with people. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. It says, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor and serve the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Then he says a very interesting statement here, which I pray that we can practice during this week. Hallelujah. Bless those who persecute you. Now, let me ask you, by the way, when we say some of these things in church, let me ask you, do you think it is an easy thing to bless guys who persecute you? Especially in your office or at home. Bless those who persecute you and do not. But usually that's what we do. Somebody persecutes me, I'll curse him. 
Even in some churches, there is where we call a cursing moment, where you are allowed to curse your enemies and decree and declare death to all of your enemies. Let me tell you this. He says, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Verse 15. Keep going. It says this. 15. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate. Be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay. Now this is where we are going. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. That is, that is natural. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, because he knows people struggle with this. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. In fact, just look at your neighbor and, and, and see if those are the people you can live at peace with. Just, just, just check, check your environment. Just, just check around. Especially those guys who are behind you. You don't know what kind of faces they've been making. So just, just turn around. Uh, they may have been making some faces. And, and you didn't know. <coughs> Hello. If it is possible, as far as it depends, not on God, but as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Look at 19. Do not take revenge, my dear friends. Do not take revenge. But leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. Verse 20, on the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, now this is very difficult, especially if that enemy is your landlord. I'm telling you, if your enemy is hungry, <laughs> feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Tell your neighbor, it is difficult, but we will trust God. And I say that to say, simply say this. Your fuse will blow out, but make sure you replace it by forgiving, by doing what is right, by leaving the vengeance to God. God knows how to repay God knows how to deal with those issues. God knows how to be a debt collector. I want you to know that God knows how to be a debt collector. God will collect your debts for you in Jesus' name. Uh, somebody needs to receive that word. God will help you collect your debts in Jesus' name. Some of the people who have your debts are in this church. But I'm telling you, God knows how to collect your debts in Jesus' name. Leave that with God. He will repay. And when God does it, he does it with graciousness. Not with the anger you have. Not with the emotions you have. Because God will make sure that both of you are sorted in the right way. Hallelujah. Both of you will have what we call a win-win situation. Because God is our father. And because God cares for all of us. Pray, pray for your boss, even though he has not given you an increase in salary for the last three years. Don't pray prayers that his tires will always be flat. <laughs> Hello, that KRA will catch up with him. <laughs> Hello, pray that he will prosper, that he will be blessed. Mm? In fact, tell your neighbor, the reason why you're sitting next to me is because I want to speak favor in your life. So why don't you take two minutes and speak favor into somebody's life? Just tell them, I speak blessings upon you. I speak, say something, say something, say something. <clears throat> I 
Amen. Say something. You've heard me share that story that when, when I was in America and somebody decided to encourage my girlfriend on my behalf. <laughs> and she was encouraged. And I came back and they were having a wedding. And I went for the wedding. Um, and the pastor says, if there's anyone here who has any reason why <laughs> these two should not be married... You can imagine all the kinds of things that were rolling in my head. Bad things. I, even when I went to the reception and I saw the cake and I had this kabad prayer I wanted to pray. <laughs> it was forming in my head but I didn't say it. I was looking at that cake and says, Father may that cake melt in Jesus name. <laughs> Don't give yourself that chance. But I went and blessed them and I greeted them and said, bless you, bless you, bless you. Have a great life. And God opened a door for me to meet the best woman in the world. Her name is Martha. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I want to say this as I conclude. The result of your faith is that your mountains will move. Hallelujah. Sometimes in a big church like this, or even those in the pavilion and those are, that are here, you know, sometimes when people are, are live together and function together, sometimes they can really hurt each other. And sometimes you can find people in here, their ex-girlfriends are inside this place. Hello? Why are you quiet? <laughs> I'm just giving you some realities. I know sometimes you'd feel very bad that so-and-so has your former girlfriend. And you're in the same church praising God. But let me tell you this. Your God is bigger. Rise above those petty things. Replace your fuse. Tell your neighbor, replace your fuse. Replace your fuse. Hallelujah. Replace your fuse. I want to say that your prayer will prevail. Just give me that last slide. That the result of your faith in prayer is this. You will experience prevailing prayer. And I want to ask now, if you believe that in the next couple of days that your prayer is going to prevail, I want you to stand. Because we are entering into this week victorious in Jesus' name. Our young people will prevail. I'm saying our young people will prevail. I'm saying our young people will prevail. They will go through the university and prevail. Yes. Our mothers will prevail. Yes. Our parents, our fathers will prevail. Yes. Our pastors will prevail. Yes. We shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Yes. Where does your faith function best? What did I say? In prayer. Which means, this week, Spend time in prayer. Now, I'm not talking about praying 24-7. I'm saying just increase your time of prayer and just talk to God and let faith be released in that realm. You're going to see amazing things happen. <clears throat> your mountains will move. You know, as a pastor, I have seen so many mountains move. We have prayed and women have conceived who could not conceive because the mountain moved. Sicknesses got healed. Mountains moved. Scholarships were found. Mountains moved. Relationships were restored. Mountains moved. Children came back. Mountains moved. People who had an alcoholic problem sobered up. Mountains moved. Let me tell you this. Your mountain is moving. Because nothing will be impossible for you. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Nothing will be impossible for you. All because of what Jesus said. And he said, pray and don't give up. Uh, let me read that verse one more time while you're still standing. Luke chapter 18, verse 2 and 3. It says, pray and don't give up. In a certain town, 
Uh, go to verse 1, actually. It's verse 1. In verse 1, he says, Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. You're praying for that loan? Pray on. Amen? You're praying for that breakthrough? Pray on. Don't give up. The God of the universe will come through for you. Hallelujah. But when you pray, believe. It's called believing prayer. Then put, plant a seed, the mustard seed. Go in there knowing that nothing shall be impossible for you. For the pastors who are visiting us today, you have come to Parklands and you have enjoyed our fellowship today. We are saying that as you go back to your churches, you are going to prevail. You are going to expand. You are going to enlarge. Amazing things will happen to you in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, you have what it takes. You have what it takes. You have what it takes. Hallelujah. Our young people, Inda, and the entire team, we know that indeed you're the leaders of today. So be an example. Hallelujah. Be an example. First Timothy 4.12. This is just for you young people. It was a verse for me for many years. It's still my verse. It says this, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for the believers. How? In your speech, in your conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. If you go that way, you will never be shaken. Never be shaken. Never be shaken. Come on, somebody. Never be shaken. Never be shaken. Forgive if there's somebody who has anything against you and leave the vengeance to God. He will fight for you. And do know this. The result is this. You will prevail. You will have that answer. And I want to declare that in this congregation, may we have a thousand testimonies in the next coming week. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. A thousand testimonies in your life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Are you glad you came? I'm glad I came. And we give all the glory to God. Let's pray. As I pray, why don't you pray and utter a prayer of thanksgiving to God? Those online, do that. Our members at the pavilion, just take a moment. Open your mouth to God and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you that faith is the key. It authorizes mountains to move, and they move. Faith as a mustard seed is moving my mountain. Don't speak in the future. Speak in the present. Faith is moving my mountains. Not faith will move. Faith is moving my mountains. Faith is setting me free. Faith is releasing the resources I need. And commit time with God this week to pray. Have an attitude of prayer. You don't have to close your eyes to pray. When you are driving with your eyes open, pray. Just have that attitude of prayer. Pray for people when you are in traffic. Pray at home. Pray at your workplace. Have an attitude. Pray for your superiors. Pray for your colleagues. Pray for the government. Pray for yourself. Pray for your children. Pray, pray, pray. God will answer your prayer. And you have been praying, if you have been praying and nothing has happened, don't stop. Keep praying. Your mountains are moving. Your mountains are moving. Father, indeed, I sense your spirit in this service. As we always do, because your spirit always comes. And dear Lord, maybe this afternoon somebody came and they had a burden. A mountain they feel that has been on their shoulders. 
But this afternoon, I can sense by faith that that situation already is being solved. That mountain is already moving. That solution is already coming. And Jesus, when you spoke to the fig tree, you rested knowing what you said was already done. The disciples were shocked to see the fig tree withered, but for you, you are not shocked. It was simply an opportunity to share the lesson of faith and say, have faith in God. Believe God in prayer. Speak to your mountains and they will move. And that's the faith I want to release upon your people this afternoon. Faith comes by hearing and hearing your word. Father, your people have heard your word. Now they are walking into, their li- into, their, into, into, the, into the situations of their lives. They may go back and find the mountains is still looking at them. But this afternoon we are saying the mountain has lost its power. The mountain is beginning to shake. The mountain is beginning to dissolve. Because God's people are standing in faith and saying in the name of Jesus be lifted up and be cast into the sea and the mountain will obey. I'm saying that your mountains are going to obey you. Your mountains are going to obey you. Your financial mountains are going to obey you. Your health mountains are going to obey you. Those things you have been trusting God for for a long time, time is up. The answer has come. The answer has come. Your time has come for God to favor you. Your breakthrough is right here. I want you to begin to believe God. That that which we have said is done. Is done. Is done. out now Hallelujah 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 What a morning, what an afternoon. Lord, I believe that even as we prepare to release your people, that they are being released into victory. They are being released into peace that passes all understanding. They are being released into joy unspeakable and full of glory. They are being released to that area that God says, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. They're being released with that promise that if God is for us, who can be against us? That they are being released today. God promising them 
that whatever you ask, it shall be given to you. Whatever you seek, you shall find. And when you knock, the door will be opened to you. Lord, we are releasing them with these words that as they go forth, they will arise and shine. For their light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon them. If you believe that, you better say, I receive it. It is my portion. It is mine. And there's nothing the devil can do about it. I am favored. I am supplied for. I am safe. I'm secure. I'm rising. I'm victorious. And there's nothing the devil can do about it. This is my portion. Starting now. Now you better give God a big hand. And bless him. Amen. Amen. We want to welcome our visitors for a cup of tea. And we now want to release you into an amazing week. Tell your neighbor, a thousand testimonies are coming our way. One of them is mine. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now lift up your hand as I bless us. And now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the countryside. You're blessed when you come in. You're blessed when you go out. Your Monday is blessed. Your Tuesday is blessed. Your Wednesday is blessed. Your Thursday is blessed. Your Friday is blessed. Your Saturday is blessed. And Sunday you're coming back with a testimony. Amen. 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 Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you, Yani you, you shall dwell in God's favor, goodness, supply, and provision. And there's nothing the devil can do about it. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Shalom. Bless you. One king.